How's it everybody? A nice little language question here. Let's get straight into it. So again, highly recommend that you hop straight into the required, into the actual questions. Just start with 5.1, start reading. Um, you don't have to read through this entire blurb, this whole text G to start with the questions, especially if you're under time pressure. Nice little tactic. So which punctuation mark could be used to replace the dash in line one without changing the meaning of the sentence? So this little dash that we've got here in line one, that hyphen, uh, we could have used a semicolon to separate ideas or a colon to indicate that there will be some kind of additional information straight after that. 5.2, I was blown away. Write formal English for the above clause. I was blown away. Simply put, uh, if you look here in context, now you can read it. Uh, but after doing my research, I was blown away. I was, I was overwhelmed. Um, look, you, you didn't have to say anything along those lines of just being overwhelmed. Uh, I was shocked. Perhaps I was taken aback. Whatever it is, right? Formal English. Blown away is very colloquial. But look, in the memo, it does indicate the word overwhelmed. Okay, but look, if you got something along the overwhelmed, shocked, taken aback kind of spectrum, yeah, I'd give you the mark. 5.3. He was taken hostage for almost five years. He spent most of it in isolation, chained with no stimulation, not even natural light. Uh, we have to rewrite the above sentence as a complex sentence. So we can use words like after or when, uh, or we can use a nice sort of conjunction, like most of which. So he was taken hostage for almost five years, most of which he spent in isolation, chained with no stimulation, not even natural light. So I'm gonna go with most of which there. Alternatively, um, after he had been taken hostage, he spent almost five years in isolation, chained with no stimulation, not even natural light. So anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. 5.4, uh, he laughed as he was freed without shoes, ambiguity, so like a double meaning here. I mean, he laughed as he was freed without shoes? So, is it because he, he laughed? Because he had no shoes on when he was released? Like, the conjunction here, as, indicates reason. Or did he laugh while he was being released? And the conjunction here, as, also indicates time. So those are the possible answers. Question 5.5. Uh, rewrite the above in reported speech. No regrets, no self-pity, no sentimentality. So wait said, we are going with reported speech here, so the next word has to be that. So wait, wait said that he had no regrets, self-pity, or sentimentality. That he had no. Okay, so wait is a male here. We will give him uh, he, him pronouns. Okay, please don't come for me with the whole pronoun thing. Look, this I'm, I'm just doing my job here, man. <laughs> don't cancel, goon. 5.6. The word uh, victimhood is an example of what? Well, it's not a pronoun. That was like, you know, he, she, they, them, all of that. Uh, adjective, this is not a describing word. Um, if you look at line nine, to celebrate victimhood, we're not describing anything. It's not a pronoun. Uh, it's not a gerund as well because there's no ing. That's what a gerund is um, when you have an ing there. Um, and this is most definitely going to be an abstract noun. You can't touch it. Think of like, you know, honesty, pride, love. These are all abstract nouns. 5.7. Uh, correct the Concord error where the subject does not agree with the verb. So sometimes it feels like a race to the bottom in which oversensitivity and intolerance causes people. Uh, it shouldn't be causes people, it should just be cause. It cause, cause people to celebrate adversity. 5.8, what has been incorrectly used above? I'll replace it with the correct word. So no wonder victim status is coveted by so many when it, when it infers benefits. Uh, the word should not be infer here, it should be confer. Okay, I'm gonna give you the answer. Uh, someone tell me, any brainiacs there? What's the difference between infer and confer? Um, yeah, just look, if you're bathing with the definition of confer, just think of it more like, oh, they confer a degree upon someone or it derived benefits. So yeah, just someone tell me the difference between the two. That is the error that was made here. That is a malapropism. Uh, and remove the tautology in the final sentence of the extract. Tautology, some level of redundancy here. Uh, leaves people indifferently apathetic. They mean the exact same thing. So you either remove indifferently or apathetic. And yeah, again, a brainiac. Someone tells me, Someone, please tell me, uh, what does indifferent mean? Is that like non-bias? Come on, what, what does it mean? So yeah, just let me know. You either remove uh, indifferently or apathetic. Look, this was pretty easy. Even if you had no cooking clue what the answer was here, they're telling you it's in the final sentence. So yeah, very, very easy one mark. You could have just made a very educated guess. But yeah, that's the question. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.